Mark, you spoke earlier today about the need to shift, for churches to shift from content thinking to systems thinking in their approaches to youth ministry. And, you know, some of us who are trained in things like family systems know that it's, it's, a, it's an issue of, of connection, that everything is interconnected in a whole unit, in a right. whole system. But what does that look like for youth ministry? Can you flesh that out for us a bit? You bet. Um, well, we can, we can easily imagine that, you know, there's, there's usually a constellation of problems in any youth ministry, but usually one bubbles up to the top. Mm. So it's easy to think, oh, our problem is we don't have a cool enough youth director. Mm. And so that would be a content issue, right? Sure. Let's solve that problem. Yeah. Everything else will trickle down from there. Or, um, you know, we don't have a good curriculum. Mm. So let's focus on fixing the curriculum. And system thinking says, um, for this thing to work, it's like, you know, the body is the system of systems. And mm -hmm. um, you don't say, you know, if we could have a really great respiratory system, we don't really care about the digestive muscular or skeletal right. system. Um, but we imagine, um, ministry much more f in a much more fragmented way mm -hmm. so we find a single problem and think if we solve that single problem that um, we're gonna we're gonna you know move be able to move the ministry forward mm -hmm. family systems theory and you know in systems work with ministry you know our our thought is let's see if we can get all of these systems beginning to work and communicate with each other so um, you know Things like a database, mm. communicating with your annual calendar, communicating with your volunteer recruitment process, which is connected to your um, your facility stuff, which is yeah. connect right. All yeah. of those have to work together, yeah. um, and uh, most most ministries would rather uh, just imagine, oh, it's youth group. Yeah, uh, let's just get Sunday night youth group. That'll that's all we need. Or right. Oh, it's just, you know, all we do is, is one mission trip a year. Mm. That's our thing. Mm. Um, and the thought is, yeah, you can have some showcase programming, but all of that is going to rise and fall based on what's happening, you know, as some people refer to it as below the waterline, yeah. stuff that you can't see. Yeah. And so many churches um, have no interest in this foundational work. Yeah. And... And they build these really intricate <laughs> sandcastles, mm. right, with no with no foundation underneath them, mm. and so their capacity becomes severely limited. And so, what well, what we try to help help churches do is, you know, the metaphor we use is we want them to build the dance floor and then hire a dancer. Mm. Um, mm. A lot of churches, in another just to mix my metaphors, churches will hire a ship's captain mm. and then ask them to build the ship. Oh, yeah. It's just a really different skill set. Right. And, you know, that's part of what we've spent, you know, the last 15 years or so doing in Minister Architects is you don't need to have a shipbuilder on your staff, hmm. but you need a shipbuilder to get the ship built. Sure. And then you can bring the, bring the captain in. And so it's the creation of those systems. The captain can then can make sure they are taken care of. Yeah. But yeah. it's often difficult for the traditional youth worker both to uh, lead the organization and to build the build the foundation under, underneath at the same time. Sure, sure. Well, and to extend that ma uh, the metaphor a little bit, the ship's captain has to keep eyes on the sea and on the landscape and have that uh, that higher view, right. while at the same time being very mindful of what's going on on the ship. Right building the ship while keeping an eye on the horizon <laughs> that's a tough yeah. that's a tough thing to hold in yeah. one in one role that and it, you know it can i mean it can happen yeah and we've seen people that sort of because you know let's face it most of us get into youth ministry because we we love having a front row seat on the work of the spirit mm. in kids lives sure right yeah we like that this incredible privilege of being you know, in relationship with kids, yeah. to paying attention to the details of their lives. Mm -hmm. We we love that. Mm -hmm. um, but I often say, if that's the reason you're getting into ministry, 
you should probably stay a volunteer mm -hmm. because a volunteer will get much more time to do that. Once you, once you are on staff, mm -hmm. <laughs> you now have responsibility for the system, yeah. for the whole organization. And often what happens is the youth pastor with this kind of gift will keep doing this. Mm. And their ministry will be severely hampered because they're really good at personally accompanying kids, personally pacing with kids, right? Mm -hmm. they, they're great at that, yeah. but their, their ministry will be severely limited because they don't have time to build a team. They say, oh, I don't yeah. work with adults, I just work with kids. Uh, right. Um, if you're just gonna work with kids, I like saying, stay a volunteer, work somewhere else, work somewhere that'll make you money so that you have time to hang out with kids. Right, right, so that the body of Christ, which is a system, right, allows yeah. for them to be the hands and feet yeah. while someone else can be the purveyor of the, the system. neurological <laughs> system, yeah, yeah. the executive the functioning, skeleton. Yeah, 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 all yeah. of those sure, things. Sure, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah.